In 2021, wind energy was one of the most important sources of energy anywhere on the planet. In Australia, around 11% of all energy comes from wind turbines. In the United States, it's just over 9%. But incredibly, China is by far the largest producer of wind energy generation in the world. In fact, it generated 236,402 megawatts in 2019. And that was around 36% of all power generated in China that year. Two other countries leading the way when it comes to wind generation are Portugal and Spain, both of whom get more than 25% of their energy from wind. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and supporting the channel. It's fantastic to see so many new subscribers. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. So what is the largest wind turbine in the world? First, let's have a look at the largest offshore wind farm, which has begun construction. This place is insane. Offshore construction work has officially started at the UK's Dogger Bank, which will be the world's largest offshore wind farm with the installation of the first length of HVDC export cable off the Yorkshire coast. Dogger Bank will also be the first HVDC wind farm in the UK. Dogger Bank Wind Farm is a joint venture between Norwegian energy giant Equinor, 40%, British utility SSE Renewables, 40%, and Italian energy company Eni Plenitude, who own 20% of the venture. It's going to be developed in three phases, phase A, B, and C. It will become the largest offshore wind farm in the world upon completion, with an installed capacity of an incredible 3.6 gigawatt hours. Each phase will be 1.2 gigawatt hours. If you're wondering how much energy this is, it's enough to power 6 million homes. Now, permission for this plant was granted in 2015, and it should actually be up and running by 2025. So if you're comparing this to something like nuclear, where it takes 10 to 20 years, it's much, much quicker. Now, one of the things about Dogger Bank is it's a really, really good place for wind generation. It's far out in the sea where there's lots of wind in that area and it's extremely shallow water. Basically, it's being built on an island which is now underwater. It used to be called Doggerland and it was an island the size of Wales, which existed in the middle of the North Sea until it was hit by the Storega Slides, which was a tsunami that happened 8,200 years ago. And this was actually the largest tsunami ever to originate in the Northern Hemisphere in the human period. The entire island was likely overtopped by the tsunami, leaving only smaller residual islands in its wake, which quite quickly succumbed to rising sea levels. Denmark headquartered cable supplier NKT will supply and install the onshore and offshore HVDC cable for all three phases of this project. And the company will use its cable laying vessel NKT Victoria to install the 320 kilovolt DC subsea cable system in the North Sea. The campaign will continue during 2022 with work starting on the export cables for Dogger Bank B in East Riding and Dogger Bank C on Teesside in the consecutive years. The project director, Stephen Wilson, said this, this is an exciting time for everyone involved in renewable energy and in this project. We celebrate installing the first nearshore HVDC export cable safely and on time. With the first foundations due to be installed later this year and the first turbines scheduled for installation in 2023, we're now well on our way to achieving first power from this unrivaled global renewable energy asset. One of the key things here is on time, right? This project should be delivered on time. Another key is on budget. This project should be delivered on budget. Those are two things you cannot say about nuclear power plants, unfortunately, which no longer make sense. Yes, they did used to make sense. They now don't make sense based on 
cost. Yes, the price is always way more than is quoted. Budget always goes way through the roof and time. The amount of time it takes now to get permits and to actually end up building a nuclear power plant is extremely long in comparison to renewable energy. Now, to give you some context about the numbers here, I said that this power plant can power 6 million homes. Well, think about it this way, right? That's a lot more than 6 million people. In the UK, where there's more than 70 million people, there's only 28.1 million households in the country. So the fact that it can power 6 million of those means that's more than 20% of the entire country of the United Kingdom. GE Renewable Energy will provide 87 enormous Halley 8 X14 megawatt wind turbines for Dogger Bank C. According to GE, just one of these 87 turbines can generate up to 74 gigawatt hours of gross annual energy production, saving 52,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide, the equivalent of the emissions from 11,000 vehicles in one year. Incredibly, only four years ago, the maximum capacity for wind turbines was 8 megawatts. Now, only a few years later, this figure has doubled as top wind energy companies work to develop even larger and more efficient turbines. The capacity to produce more energy from a single turbine means fewer turbines need to be built at each wind farm. And this means a lower capital expenditure for companies and simplified operation and maintenance processes, increasing the accessibility and the long-term affordability of renewables for both companies and customers, for you and me. What's happening now? We're racing towards 20 megawatt turbines, which should come pretty soon. In the meantime, the world's biggest wind turbine is the Ming Yang Smart Energy Turbine. It's made by a Chinese wind manufacturer and it currently holds the record for the biggest wind turbine in the world. The Mai SE or 16.0242 is an offshore hybrid drive wind turbine and its diameter is 242 meters long. Its blades are 118 meters long and the turbine has a 46,000 square meter swept area. That means it's wider than two NFL football pitches. Incredible. This particular turbine is designed for high wind IEC, IB, including Typhoon class winds, and has a nameplate capacity of 16 megawatts, which is absolutely enormous. But it's only two megawatts bigger than each of the 87 wind turbines being used at the Dogger Bank wind farm. Now, there's a lot of people who believe, they still think wind generation isn't cost effective, doesn't work, doesn't make sense. But some of those beliefs are based on old technology. It's like saying, you know, they can't be smartphones because I've only got a Nokia 3330. I've only got a BlackBerry phone with buttons all over it. So therefore, smartphones can't exist. Well, just because you don't know about them doesn't mean they don't exist. Wind turbines like this are extremely cost efficient and incredibly effective at generating massive amounts of energy with very, very, very little need for ongoing maintenance. This industry has come a long, long way over the past decade. And as you can see by China, where 36% of all energy is derived from wind, it's extremely effective, extremely powerful, and really is an extremely important part of the world's future energy needs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.